Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and this cute bison is the current pattern in the Funny Faces Quilt Block of the Month Club. So when I say current, it is July 1st, 2023, and this is the pattern that's exclusive to Funny Faces Club members throughout the month of July. So if you join any time in the month of July, this is the pattern that you're going to get instantly. If you're already in the club, you should have already received an email with a link to download the pattern. Here's how to make it. All right, let's assemble this cute buffalo block. So I've got all of my pieces prepared. This is the video showing you how to do it if you do not have a light box. So I have transferred all of the dotted lines from the back of the pattern onto the front of the pattern. And for that, I use a couple of different things. On dark fabrics, on anything where I can, I use just a chalk marker. Um, if it had a lighter fabric, uh, like on this one, the horns, I will use a pencil because the chalk, the white chalk does not show up on it. And on places where I'm going to applique over it uh, with just a solid black fabric, I'll use like where these eyes go, I will use just a black Sharpie marker. marker. So that is all of our pieces. So all of the pieces are ready to go and I'm just gonna start peeling them off and placing them. So the numbers on the back of the pieces are a reference that'll show you what piece goes where, but for if you don't have a light box, they have no other significance. So I usually like to start with the pieces that have a straight edge on them. Those are the pieces that are gonna be lined up with the bottom raw edge of the block. If you imagine this like a photograph, that makes it look like the, like the bison has a body, it's just not in the photo because it's been cropped out of the photo. So next up, I like to put the face on there. And if you, you've got these lines that I transferred, as long as I have covered up the lines, I know that I have a good amount of overlap there and I'm going to be able to um, stitch it down and it'll hold up very well in the wash. So now I've got, let's see, I think I will put this shaggy hair on the top next. And again, once I cover up those lines, I know I've got good coverage. All right, next up, I'm gonna tuck his horns in there. So the horns are going to tuck underneath that shaggy hair. So it's as if he's, um, that hair is flopping over the top edges of the horns. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So you can see I've got lines here showing where the hair overlaps. And I've got lines on here showing where the horn overlaps. So we're just going to tuck that in there and let that hair overlap it. All right, next up, we will place some ears, and the ears are two pieces. There's a, um, there's a top part of the ear that tucks under the horn, and then there's a bottom part of the ear that tucks under the top part, so this gives him a look. Whoops, I should be holding this one up. This one, this makes it look like he has a, an ear that's kind of flopping over, folding over on the top. So I like to start working my way down. So I'm gonna start with the, the rounded piece that tucks underneath the horn. There we go. And again, just cover up those markings. Whoops, it also should be going underneath the head. So it goes underneath the head and the horn. And then we've got this lower part of the ear that is going to tuck underneath this darker piece. This is the where it makes things a little bit easier if you have a light box because you can lay the pieces down from the bottom up um, because you don't need to use the pieces that are already in place as a guide for placement. But we got that, we got that well. 
So now we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Whoops, I'm gonna start with the more rounded piece. And that tucks underneath the horn and underneath the head. You can see I just kind of wiggled it until I got those pieces tucked away, those lines covered up. And now we've got the pointier piece for the underside of the ear. And we're going to slip that underneath the top part of the ear, oops, which I just moved, and underneath this little shaggy point. it takes a little wiggling there we go okay now we're gonna put his nose in place and that goes right where I've got it marked and then there's a little bit of um, his under lip basically which is just going to tuck under that curve of his nose there all right, and now all I have left are the eyes and the little nostrils. So the eyes are pretty big. They're not going to be difficult to outline. The nostrils, they're a little small. You can still outline them. I will be outlining them, so I'm going to sew them in place. But if you dislike stitching down such small pieces, there are multiple options for alternatives, and the pattern has links to a post that gives you lots and lots of those options. I share in there my favorite fabric paints for doing that. I share my favorite fabric markers. There's links to tutorials showing um, how you can mach machine stitch these. If you have an embroidery machine, there are free files for uh, that you can download and use on your embroidery machine for ovals of different sizes. Lots and lots of different options but um, those are all linked in the post. So there we go. That is the almost finished bison. I'm going to carefully lift this up, take it over to my ironing board, fuse all those pieces in place, and then I'll take it to my sewing machine and I will outline stitch all of those pieces. That's gonna hold them in place so this can be washed. And it's also going to give the, some extra definition to the design because I outline with black thread everywhere. And then I'll bring it back here and show you the finished block and also show you some a couple of other color options. All right, here is the finished bison. This is one of the color options that I did. So this is one, I, I always forget to mention this, but I'm trying to remember. The bison itself is all of the colors are from the, um, the Grizzly Blenders, which is all the different shades of brown that I have. And this background block is also one of the Grizzly bent br Blenders. So he is brown on brown on brown, but you get a range of light and darks within those blenders. And so it works. But here are a couple of other options. So on this version, the bison is also from the Grizzly Blenders, but the background block is one of the Strawberry Blenders from the Farmer's Market collection. And I have one more version. Oh, before I switch to the next one, I did want to show you that this one has got some eyelashes stitched on there, which makes it extra cute. And I've got one more. So this one, uses all of the um, all of these shades of orange are in the cantaloupe blenders collection which is also part of the farmers market collection like the strawberry blenders here and this background block is from the animal kingdom collection this is one of the blocks that i've got that you can get this fabric from spoonflower as 12 inch squares and it has the quilting lines already printed on the fabric so when you are quilting the blocks you just follow those lines and it's a great way especially if you're just getting started with this kind of quilting it's a great way to to get some practice doing it before you do it, try and do it without any lines so that is the bison block this is the funny exclusive to the funny faces quilt block of the month club for the month of july I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next month.